If you've booked a Caribbean cruise from Fort Lauderdale or the surrounding areas, chances are you're going to need a pre-cruise hotel the night before your departure. Embassy Suites Fort Lauderdale on 17th Street has been a favorite pre-cruise hotel property for cruise passengers sailing from the Fort Lauderdale or Port Everglades area for so many years. It's sort of a cult favorite and cruise travelers book it year after year after year. So today we're going to share six things that we love about this hotel and two things that are ugh, not so great. We hope that this helps you to make a decision. So if you have a favorite hotel in the area, be sure to share it with us down in the comments because we really want to help other cruisers. For reference, the hotel is located just a short drive from both the Fort Lauderdale Airport and the Port Everglades Cruise Port. And they have nightly happy hour with free drinks and snacks. So you can kind of see why people like this place. The rooms and suites are oversized and the pool totally gets you into the cruise mood. In recent years, we found that this hotel kind of gets mixed reviews from cruise travelers. It's not perfect and it's not new and it's certainly not fancy. Regardless, even we find ourselves booking this property cruise after cruise, probably because it's comfortable and reasonable and we know what to expect, so we just book it over and over. So we're going to share some hot tips throughout this video to make the most of your stay. But before we get started, welcome to Cruise Tips TV. Hi, I'm Sherry and my family and I travel the world and share cruise tips and tricks to help you make every cruise your dream cruise. If you're new here, we would love to invite you to subscribe and check out how you can follow our travels on social media down in the description below. Okay. So here is what we love, love, love about the embassy suites in Fort Lauderdale. First up, convenience. This hotel is super easy to access from the Fort Lauderdale airport, like I mentioned earlier. So whether you choose to take a taxi or a rideshare service like Lyft or Uber or even a shuttle, you're basically less than 10 minutes with light traffic from the airport. It's really, really nice after a long travel day. Also, the cruise port itself is less than two miles from the hotel. On paper, you guys, it's like six blocks, super close. So on cruise day, you're only about a six to 10 minute drive from your ship. Now the hotel does offer a shuttle to the port for a small charge, but we like to opt for Uber or Lyft because it seems to offer more flexibility around when we leave the hotel and it just costs a couple of bucks. So here's a hot tip for the airport. To find the Uber and Lyft pickup area at the Fort Lauderdale airport, just pass through the baggage claim and follow the signs that say ride share. It's pretty easy, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now there's lots of conveniences within walking distance of Embassy Suites Fort Lauderdale too. You'll find coffee shops and spas, a grocery store, Publix, and even a wine store if you're gonna take wine on your cruise. So we walked over to Publix before our cruise and we stocked up on some stuff that we chose not to put in our carry-on suitcases for our flight, like sunscreen, some bigger toiletries, and even some bottled water. Another thing we love about this hotel, and other people usually agree with us on this one, is the pool area. Our community shared that the pool area is a standout reason that they come back to this hotel time and time again. There's one relatively big pool, a hot tub, and there's plenty of loungers for sunning or just relaxing in the shade. The pool area is like nice and green and lushly landscaped with a combination of palm trees and pretty shrubs and greenery. We really like, I know this is kind of funny, but we love watching the lizards and iguanas kind of in the greenery. And there's this waterfall grotto feature on one side of the pool that makes it feel really inviting. So the pool ranges from about three feet in depth on one side and six foot on another. And it's really comfortable for light lap swimming or standing in the shallow end to enjoy like a tropical Mai Tai to get into the cruise spirit. You'll also find plenty of high and low top tables for enjoying poolside food and the restaurant staff passes by every so often to take your food and your drink orders, which is really, really nice. Now the food prices are pretty steep, like nachos are about $19 in 2023, but it does the trick and everything in South Florida is kind of pricey, right? Also something good to know, the pool area is very communal and it's likely that you're gonna meet other cruise passengers enjoying themselves before or after their cruise. So be prepared to make new friends. Another thing we love, free drinks and breakfast, woo! This perk is probably reason number one that cruisers flock to this hotel. 
So here's how it works. Each evening between 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m., the bar in the E-Spot restaurant transforms into like a nightly reception venue. You just show up with your free drink ticket that they gave you at check-in, and each adult gets two free drinks of choice. You can get alcohol or non-alcoholic. The freebies, though, you guys, they're house brands of wine, beer, and spirits. And if you want premium, you're gonna have to pay more. You're gonna have to pay to upgrade, basically. So you're getting basic drinks here. So I'll be honest, while this did make my list of reasons we love the hotel, the evening reception is not my personal favorite event. Some of the bar staff seem kind of frustrated to like repeat which beers and liquors and wines are available and a really big crowd can form for the bar drinks and it can take on this like frenzied feel when the hotel is busy. So you might want to just consider waiting until after 6.30 and buy your own bar drink. That's what I did. I got the freebie, but I was, felt like it just left me wanting more. So I went back, I got a $15 martini and it was totally worth it. It was so much more peaceful in there when the frenzy kind of died down. Now, here's a little tip for you though, if you do want to hit the reception, show up right when they open at 5 p.m. It's less crowded that way. And that's one way to kind of get around it. All right, so while we're on the topic of free drinks, nothing irks me more than having to schlep to the lobby for my morning coffee in a hotel. But we love that there is an included single serve coffee setup in the room. We had a Keurig. I don't know if everybody gets a Keurig, but we asked for extra K cups to be brought to our room. And of course we tipped housekeeping when we made this request, but we really enjoyed the coffee. Oh, and there were some free snacks at the evening reception. Just don't come looking for filling or hot food from the freebie table. Expect, expect stuff like potato chips, veggies, ranch, fruit slices. You're gonna need dinner after the snack session. It's not like really substantial. So for something more filling, grab a table at the restaurant afterwards and enjoy a burger, salad, pizza, something like that. The restaurant food's pretty good. All right, so how about the breakfast? Well, the same kind of frenzy vibe applies sometimes when it's a busy cruise day, but I added this to the things we love column because there are just some really filling and delicious breakfast options, and it's included with the room price. So what I love about it is that you can just like hit your cruise with a full belly and not have to worry. And here's a tip. Try the omelets. They're freshly cooked, they're delicious. Okay, value is another reason we absolutely love this hotel, you guys. Depending on the time of year you visit, you might find that this hotel seems to be pretty competitively priced for what you get. So because of the stuff we just mentioned, the free breakfast, the drinks, you might find that you spend less on outside food and drink. And because the hotel is not located like on that pricey beachfront property, the prices seem to be a little bit more manageable at times. Now, if you're a Hilton Honors or triple A member or, you know, double ARP member, anything you can find, click on the special rates button when you're pricing out your stay to see if you can score some discounts. And here's another tip for you. Book a refundable fare at this hotel in advance. And this could be a really good way to save and you can always come back and cancel and reprice later. It's pretty easy to find refundable rates for this hotel. The value at this place really comes into play if you need a little bit of extra space, which we're gonna cover next. Another thing we love, you guys, the large guest rooms. I mean, they're huge. Embassy Suites has this all suites approach, meaning you get more living and sleeping space and square footage than the average hotel. This is really good for families or people considering a longer stay. We reserved a two room premium suite and took full advantage of ordering dinner from DoorDash. And we just sat at the nice dining table in the room. It was so relaxing. Now, while our stay before our cruise was only for two nights, we did use the refrigerator and the microwave in our room and the extra space complete with a sofa bed where our son slept, like there was this whole other room for him. It was a real luxury for a hotel. Embassy Suites Fort Lauderdale has a lot of different types of guest rooms from standard suites, they're all kind of suites, to a wide variety of accessible rooms and even presidential suites. I haven't seen those. <laughs> the views vary by floor and of course, the side of the building you're on. Now we requested a room with a view of the cruise ships, but pool view rooms are also really, really nice. Those are the two I'd go with, either ask for a room with a view of the cruise ships or the pool. Now here's a hot tip, watch your email for room upgrades from the Embassy Suites. If you book direct, you might get an email and it'll help you score a higher floor at the hotel. And you could get a really great view from up there just for a tiny little upcharge. Next up, 
the staff is really friendly here, you guys. They're really super sweet. They go out of their way. Nearly every employee we encountered at this hotel, from the front desk staff to the bartenders and the housekeeping staff was pleasant and eager to please. They really shine in this area, in my opinion. And the staff was like friendly, but they were kind of laid back, just willing to help in a casual way. Here's an example. When we went to the restaurant after closing hours, we showed up, they, were, they weren't serving food. The restaurant manager was like, hey, here's some nearby restaurants. And he really went out of his way to share knowledge and make sure we went out and got something to eat. And our poolside waitress, she was really great too. She brought us extra paper plates and utensils and lots of like timely drink refills. It was really good. Okay, now we got to talk about the stuff that's not so great with this hotel because it's going to come up. First up, there's a general lack of upkeep. Unfortunately, cruise passengers are reporting that this hotel is kind of just showing its age. You know, during our recent stay, we found it to be the case. The furniture was scuffed. The carpet was stained in some areas. The guest rooms are kind of dated. In our room, some of the wallpaper was like pulling away from the wall in our bathroom. And the room, while it was clean, it just felt kind of old. Now down by the pool, some of the lounge chairs were falling apart. They were kind of shredded. And it was obvious that they hadn't swept the area lately. It's just kind of dated. What else can we say about it? It's just the reality. There's mustard yellow walls, popcorn ceilings, and there's like an overall dark feeling in the hotel that makes it just feel kind of out of date. But if you can overlook this, which to us it's kind of minor, the hotel represents a really good value and the rooms are spacious compared to other things in the area. Lastly, the property really does have limited dining hours. As mentioned earlier, they have a complimentary breakfast and that's from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on weekends and holidays and 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. weekdays. Additionally, the on-site restaurant, the eSpot, is open from noon to 8 p.m. daily. There's no room service available, which is something that we're seeing a lot more with Hilton properties. You guys notice that too? So it kind of leaves these gaps in food service after breakfast and in the evening hours, which some people might find inconvenient. Like if you miss breakfast, the restaurant on site doesn't open till noon. So there's like a three hour window when there's no food on the property, except for the lobby snacks. They do have a lot of lobby snacks you can buy, but they're pretty limited. Also, if you check into the hotel late, like maybe your flight arrives in the evening, you might end up getting forced off property to find something to eat if you come in after 8 p.m. Thankfully, there's lots of restaurants within walking distance, and there's a brochure that lists those in your room. You can also totally do DoorDash in this area or Uber Eats or whatever. And here's a hot tip. If the weather's good, get outside, head out, walk around the property. You'll see restaurants and shops, and you might just find something that you'll enjoy for a meal. That's what we did. We actually went to Outback Steakhouse, and it was great. It was really good. All right, you guys. So have you stayed at this property before? I know a lot of you have. What were your impressions? Remember earlier I said if there's another hotel that you recommend, let us know down in the comments. Fill up the comment section with all of your Fort Lauderdale recommendations for hotels, food, things to do. We appreciate you all so much. Give us a quick subscribe before you go. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye.